course it matters. Size always matters, but it's not what you have, it's how you use it. Huh, keep saying that to yourself, honey. Go in. I've had the Mini for over a year now, as I unboxed it during a live stream last year. I was one of the first to purchase it minutes within launch at Earth 2019. And since it's arrived, it's done well over 1,500 hours of printing. The short version of this review, for those who don't want to sit through it, is this is a great little big machine which won't break the bank and will give you one of the best 3D printing experiences currently on the market. For the longer version of this review, stick around. I took my sweet time with this review, uh, mainly because, well, 2020 happened, uh, but that gave me quite a lot of time to put the machine through its paces. After all, it's marketed as a workhorse, so it was only fair for me to treat it as such. So get your fingers warmed up in the comment section because I am ready to say that this is my favorite printer of 2020. Now this review is months in the making, well, a year in the making, uh, which took a lot of time. Took a lot of testing, took a lot of printing, um, but what doesn't take a lot of time is actually just clicking on the subscribe button and ring the bell for notification, possibly leave a like. Three seconds it's total, that's all, just do it please, for me, for, for YouTube algorithm. The Prusa Mini has a build volume of 180 by 180 by 180. It's a cantilever design, meaning that the X-axis is supported at one end, which also works as the Z-axis. It comes as a kit version or a mostly pre-assembled one, which you can have up and running within 30 minutes. The frame of the Mini is made up of 3030 aluminum extrusions. Yes, I said aluminum, that's a word which gives it a very rigid design for such a small and lightweight frame. Now Prusa moved away from their usual Direct V6 Hoddens on the Mini and instead opted for a custom-made Bowden setup. This makes the Hodden assembly very light, which in turn assists with the little weight resting on the cantilever arm. The Hodden does, however, accept E3D nozzles due to having the same thread sizes. The Mini runs on Prusa's new 32-bit board dubbed Buddy, which also comes with a new color display. It has sensorless homing, which means there are no limit switches anywhere. It comes with a removable spring steel build plate covered in PEI, with options to also have it as textured, automatic mesh bed leveling, and a filament runout sensor. The power supply comes in the form of a brick, and the whole printer itself has a footprint of 33 centimeters by 40 centimeters, accounting for the full bed movement. This doesn't include any resting place for the spool holder. This means though, it can sit perfectly on a desk printing away. Now the most beautiful thing about this, it's ridiculously quiet to the point where if you have it two to three meters away from you, you won't even know it's printing. Finally, it has a USB input for the included dongle to print untethered, a micro USB input and also an ethernet port, which I'll get to later on. The cost of all this, 379 euro for the kit version. Yep, all that for 379 euro. Now, you probably go on and argue that there are cheaper printers with larger build volumes out there, and you'd be right. However, it's the little differences that make the bigger impact in the experience. Like punctuation, for example. You could say, let's eat, grandma. But you can also say, let's eat, grandma. Same, same, but different. Now multiply that effect of one single punctuation and put it into a 4,000 word essay. Those little things start adding up and it flips your whole experience upside down. And with the Mini, is the experience that actually makes the whole difference. There's no tweaking, no tinkering. The learning curve to 3D printing is reduced considerably thanks to the open source ecosystem created by Prusa. Add to that a warranty and absolutely stellar customer support, which actually comes from the company itself and not some reply with potential toxicity coming from social media. Then there are the constant firmware updates. Prusa pushes out firmware updates for all of its machines, really. The Mini is no different every couple of weeks, it seems. Just yesterday, a new release candidate was put on uh, GitHub for the Mini. It contains a feature which no one's ever seen on a 3D printer, and that is it displays a QR code on the screen when the Mini suffers an error. You simply scan the QR code and you are sent to a Prusa page with the error code details and also possible fixes. 
the Mini can pretty much print any filament you throw at it. Some of my test subjects on the table have been printed in PEG, uh, PLA, HTPLA, flexible filaments, and I've also done nylon printing for some functional prints in my new workshop. The print quality is in line with what I would expect from a Prusa machine. It won't be flawless, but it will be pretty much as good as you can possibly get on an FDM machine. Now bear in mind that everything I've printed here today, uh, I've printed with standard profiles included in Prusa Slicer. I don't really usually have the time to stay tweaking filaments, which is why I tend to really like Prusa machines because they just work out of the box with the supplied um, uh, profiles. And this is one of the major things that matter to someone like me, someone who just doesn't print things for fun, which I do, I, I absolutely love doing that. But I am someone who needs a workhorse, someone who's looking for consistency, repeatability, and most of all quality. I've used this machine heavily for customer prints while I had all other machines during the pandemic printing face shields. This was just sitting there quietly away printing customer prototypes. That doesn't mean, of course, it cannot be used to print the fun stuff, which obviously I, I have. Quite the contrary, it's also perfect for such things. As you can see, I've printed my fair share of organic models with the Mini um, because I really wanted to see how it performs. Photosman has a great collection of models which can at times challenge a 3D printer, so I tend to use a lot of his models to see how a machine can perform. Most of them print very easily without supports, like for example, these Davy Jones busts, which turned out absolutely brilliant. The Popeye model printed with little supports under the chin and the pipe. The pipe is quite thin, so this was a very good test to see how it would perform, which it didn't disappoint in. To add to that, the HTPLA I used had been out for months, so it was riddled with moisture, and yet it performed extremely well. The Dragon, on the other hand, was covered in supports as it's a very complex model to print with many floating parts along the wings, the head, and the spine but it performed beautifully. I want to add that this was Prusa Mint filament, so you'd expect the profile in Prusa Slicer to be perfectly tuned for it, which it is, as the model printed without pretty much any flaws whatsoever, having supports come off extremely easy. The Franken Noob was my first ever ZBrush sculpt, which I made available exclusively to my patrons. It's printed in Prusa Mint Mystic Green. It was printed at 0.15 millimeter layer height, and it had a couple of cooling issues under the chin. This tends to happen at 0.15 millimeter layer heights on most of my machines, to be honest. Now, this can also be attributed to the fact that the cooling fan on the Mini runs on the back, blowing towards the front. So keeping that in mind helps you orientate the model better for optimal cooling, especially when it comes to overhangs. When it comes to PEG, which is one of the materials I tend to use most these days, the Mini performs brilliantly. I'll bite some stringing, which can easily be counteracted by making sure your filament is completely dry. If that persists, increasing retraction by a millimeter or two will definitely solve the issue. I printed many Mark III upgrade parts for my other machines, along with an endless amount of prototypes for a mechanism that I, uh, I'm working on, which you will find out, um, hopefully in another episode. Then we have the Peak de la Resistance, the Havoc Blaster by Yuri. This on its own was a few hundred hours of prints in PLA. The parts for the blaster seem to have been created for a machine this size, as some of them fit just about perfectly. In fact, with a few pieces, I removed the skirt in order to fit the parts comfortably on the build plate. However, every single part was printed on the Mini, and that was the whole purpose of this model. Post-processing was very minimal. At first, I was pasting filler and sanding prior to spraying the model with primer. Then I just gave up as the flat walls printed incredibly smooth, so the gray primer I used was enough to fill any tiny gaps in between layers. And then some light sanding at the end, followed by a final coat of primer. The result is a massive blaster measuring approximately one meter long. It still requires a proper paint job, of course, but that will come at a later stage and in another video. So make sure to subscribe and ring the bell for notification. Now I mentioned previously that the Mini comes with an Ethernet port 
for connectivity. Prusa is now slowly releasing their print farm software, with the current stage being very basic for monitoring activity. I admit that I haven't used this as I'm always within an arm's length of the machine, so I could see at which stage the print is. However, the Mini is a workhorse, so it sits very comfortably in a production print farm, and features like this will always help, especially in the future when it's developed even further. So but now you're wondering, Joe, are you going to say anything against this machine? Um, the answer is uh, no, not anymore. When I say not anymore, it's because there was something that used to bug me about this machine. In fact, it was a bit frustrating, but they fixed that with a firmware update. It basically had to do with loading the filament. Once you load the filament, if you miss the gears on the extruder and it doesn't push it all the way through, you only get one option to push the filament a little bit further, which was like a few centimeters. And then the screen just goes into the home screen. So you cannot keep on pushing the filament through until it starts coming out if you miss the mark. That is fixed now. You can keep on pushing or you can restart over. And that's the thing with this new 32-bit board. This is new for Prusa. This is kind of like a test benchmark of how far it can put it, what features, how it can be fixed, and it's constant learning and improving. Because at the end of the day, the same 32-bit board will probably be used on the Prusa XL and their tool changing capabilities. So I'm, I'm extremely excited um, for that thing to come out. The truth is, as I said, the Mini has become my favorite printer of 2020. I've recommended it to many friends here in Malta who have bought one, some of which are buying a second, someone else I know is buying a third. So it's, it's not just what I think, it's, it's a proven fact now that the Mini is actually a very reliable machine that people enjoy. It's the experience, it's the out-of-the-box experience where once you assemble it, it, there's very little else to do to it except just slice a model and print it. Disclaimer as always, all thoughts on this machine and everything I have said in this review are based on my own experience with this machine right here. While other people might have had some issues with this machine, I didn't. I mentioned everything um, that, you know, that happened with this machine. I paid full retail price for this machine. Um, in fact, I didn't even get my VAT reduced price because I didn't have a VAT number back then. Um, so I definitely also wasn't paid for this review. That is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. As I said, I'm still doing reviews. So if any of you unsubscribed because you thought there was no more 3D printing on the channel, go back and subscribe. Just, you know, just do it. Yes, this is the third time I'm saying it. Um, because there will still be 3D printing reviews, tutorials. I'll just be doing many more things when it comes to making stuff. So make sure you stick around. Thanks again for watching and as always, happy making guys.